Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and this is Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. I want to thank each and every one of you for helping us get to 1,000 subscribers. I am thankful for all of you. In today's DIY video we are making a charming and rustic Christmas tree out of Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks, the Dollar Tree jank blocks. You all loved the bowls and the cornucopia, but I have had more than one request for a Christmas tree. And I am here to deliver that to you. So grab your Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks and your Christmas spirit for this DIY Jenga block Christmas tree. It's pretty cool, so stick around. And let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this DIY Dollar Tree Jenga Block Christmas tree to begin with, I am using about two and a half boxes and that's the 72 count box of the Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Blocks. And I'm also using Dollar Tree wood glue for its strong hold. I coffee stained three boxes of the blocks just to be safe. The setup for the tree is to glue five blocks end to end and as straight as possible. Not an easy feat, but you have to do your best. I'm gonna be making 29 rows of these five blocks and it's a lot of gluing, folks. It's a lot of gluing, but the gluing is really important. So you wanna be sure to use plenty of glue and also allow ample drying time. So I'm using that L-shaped ruler from Dollar Tree in an attempt to keep my rows of blocks straight as I glue them. Now, let me know in the comments, you guys, what secrets do you have for keeping your blocks straight as you glue them? What mysteries of tumbling tower blocks can you kindly share with me? You guys were so helpful with telling me about the coffee staining, which I love, incidentally. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but thank you so much. So I am hoping to learn some new tumbling tower block insider secrets don't hold out on me we're tight at this point come on clue me in i need to know so after gluing and drying all 29 rows of the five jenga blocks end to end it occurred to me that seeing as these rows will have a hole in the middle and basically be hanging off of a metal rod that's going to go right through the middle of them they may not be as sturdy as i hoped um and I was afraid an end piece might just snap off of one of them. So I did take some of those mini craft sticks, the little skinny ones from the Dollar Tree. I also coffee stained them to match the color of the blocks and plot twist, those craft sticks do not take the coffee stain as deeply and as nicely as the Jenga blocks do. So know that going in you might want to try some real stain to match or maybe some Waverly antique wax or something like that. They weren't that awful though, so I was just hoping that since they'd be on the bottom side of each row, they really wouldn't be that visible. And I proceeded to cut the round edges off of the sticks, glued two sticks onto the back of each row, just making sure to cover all the joints where the Jenga blocks were attached to each other, if that makes any sense. With that, I have 29 rows of five Jenga blocks with the craft sticks glued to the back. I did my best to measure where the absolute middle was for each row because I'm going to drill a hole through the middle of each row. And I marked the middle. I also numbered the rows from the bottom to the top, one through 29, so that I would know exactly the correct order to assemble the rows to form our tree after we cut each row to size. So I marked that all with pencil, the middle, and then numbered them. I then turn each row to its side with those ugly craft sticks facing downward. I'm doing this because this is the side I'm going to draw the outline of my Christmas tree on. I am using a yardstick to get the right angle for this, basically a long thin triangle or cone shape. I angle it from the middle Jenga block on the top row down to the edge of the outer Jenga block on the bottom row. This sounds complicated, but I assure you it is not. We are just drawing a triangle in pencil down the length of all the rows together so we can then cut them out on an angle. 
Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I am really intimidated by most power tools. And my husband, that would be Mr. Medicated, was kind enough to get me this early Christmas present. How cute is this saw? This is a mini cut saw that cuts angles on tiny pieces of wood. And it's so cute and tiny that even I am not intimidated by it. I figured this saw was perfect to cut Jenga blocks. And it is, and it isn't. It does cut angles, but because my angles for this project are on the side of the Jenga block, which is the tall part of the block, the saw only goes like three quarters of the way through. It doesn't complete the cut. So I used the saw to kind of pre-cut all my angles, and then I had to follow through with a hand saw to finish all the cuts. For regular angles and straight cutting on Jenga blocks that are lying flat and like wood dowels and stuff like that, this thing would be awesome. And it's not too loud or heavy to move or as messy as a regular size saw. I will link it in the description if you are interested. He got it for I think about $39. I am looking forward to using it for some other projects. It sort of came in handy for this one. Didn't fully get the job done, but it was definitely helpful. So this is me finishing all the angle cuts with the coping handsaw. I had to cut the last little bit through of each angle cut I had made with the mini cut saw because it didn't go all the way through. I did this on all 29 rows of blocks and boy were my arms tired. This was quite the workout. And just a side note, you can see all the extra blocks up in the left corner of the screen. That's what was left after cutting each of my rows into a triangle shape. And yes, there's a lot of wasted Jenga blocks there. I definitely think that if I were to do this again, I would have waited to glue all my rows until I saw exactly how many blocks that I needed, you know, for each of the rows into that triangle shape. You can see toward the top that those rows only used four or three or even two blocks, even one in the end. But because I wasn't sure how this would go, I just made all 29 rows the same size, just in case. You certainly don't have to do it the way that I did and waste the blocks that I ended up cutting away. I generally don't like to be that wasteful. And after I filmed this, I did try and snap off most of the whole blocks that were left of each row, and I saved them for some other project. So at this point, all the rows are angle cut. All the rows have a hole drilled into the middle of them. Again, thank you, Mr. Medicated. They are drilled just large enough to fit over the metal rod that will be the backbone of our Christmas tree. I had saved the extra coffee that I used to stain the Jenga blocks initially, and I used that with a paintbrush to stain the newly cut ends of all of my rows just because they were significantly lighter than the rest of the wood and it really didn't look as nice as it, it should. So I stained all the edges with the coffee so that everything would match. I had this thick wood round that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I used some of the coffee to stain it. And my husband was kind enough to countersink a little space there in the middle for the branch that's from my backyard and that was going to be used as the body of my Christmas tree. So the base is a wood round with a tree branch glued into the hole in the middle of it and a metal rod that fits right into the middle of the branch which had a hole drilled into it earlier. For the top of the tree, I'm taking four Jenga blocks glued together, two on top of two. I drew a triangle onto the front and I'm going to cut a triangle out of that block of four and then drill a hole right into the middle of it. That will make a nice point at the very top of our Christmas tree. So the assembly is tree branch into wood round metal rod into tree branch standing up and then rows 1 through 29 one by one onto the metal rod and our triangle block that we just cut will be at the very top and this is how my jenga block christmas tree came out i absolutely love this tree i love it simple and without any stuff all over it I think with a simple string of lights or maybe a tiny bit of greenery, that's all that it needs. 
It's so versatile. It can be set up in several different ways, straight across, sort of like one dimensional or kind of crisscrossed or my personal favorite with all the branches kind of haphazard all over the place. Let me know in the comments which way you think it looks best. I think this can be rustic or modern or depending on the color you stain it, even driftwoody, beachy, coastal, or go the total traditional route and paint or stain it green. The possibilities are truly endless. I've seen trees like this made out of scrap wood or driftwood, but never out of jingle blocks. And some of them selling for as much as $300. Ours costs about $3 to make. It doesn't get any better than that. I hope you love this Christmas tree as much as I do. I hope you enjoyed this medicated housewife DIY. And if you'd like to see more DIYs, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the medicated housewife and crafting is my medication.